So it's been about 10 years since I played the original Last of Us game. I played it right after it first came out. I think it took me about a year to get through. I'm not the fastest gameplay player. I have never gone back to revisit it since, even though it was my favorite story-driven game of all time and still is. I could have gone back and played it right before the show aired, but I really wanted to experience this show with fresh eyes, with just being able to appreciate the show for the show that it is and not be comparing it to the game in every single scene. However, after the episode airs, I am going back and watching the gameplay walkthrough for the section that the show covers so that when I talk to you guys about it and I kind of review the episodes, then I can compare and contrast. So let's get into episode one of The Last of Us. Now, first of all, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Let's just get it out of the way, the casting. I mean, HBO was screwed no matter what they did, right? Like, I honestly think they could have just taken the characters from the game and somehow recreated them into human versions, identical, and people still would have complained. I mean, we know how the internet and social media works. If you've lived in this world at all for the last five or ten years, you know people have opinions. Let's face it, it is not the first time we have judged a casting choice before ever seeing any footage. So I'm not surprised that people had some things to say about the casting of Joel and specifically the casting of Ellie. Now for me personally, I was more than happy to just let the episode air before I judged the casting choices at all. And I'm happy to say I thought they were terrific. I thought Pedro really felt like Joel from the game. I thought he had that gruffness that had that rough around the edges. He he kind of looks like him to a certain degree. And, and I thought he was just terrific. I thought he was great as Joel. I have no issues with Pedro Pascal as Joel. Bella Ramsey is Ellie. Now, this is where the show, for me, feels a little bit different from the game. But for me, it's a good thing. I thought in the game, as much as we all love Ellie from the game, she is very innocent feeling. She feels a bit kind of light. Um, almost like she doesn't quite come from the same world that Joel comes from. And I get it. She's younger, but she did grow. She was born into this world. She has known nothing but this like awful, terrible world where at every turn you could die and there are things trying to rip you apart. And I feel like in the show, Bella Ramsey's version of Ellie, it embodies the core elements of Ellie, but it brings that little bit of like toughness, that rough around the edges, that there's just something about her in the show that feels like it fits in the world. Just that little bit better. Anna Torv, I'm really excited to see her back acting. She isn't in a ton of stuff, but when she is in it, I always enjoy watching her. I thought she was terrific in Mindhunters. I've loved her, loved her in Fringe. That was one of my all-time favorite shows back in the day. And so I'm excited to see her in this as Tess. And I thought she embodied Tess perfectly. Going back and watching the walkthrough, Anna Torv really feels like Tess. The way that Anna Te the, the way that Anna Tess, <laughs> the way that Anna Torv walks and talks feels like Tess and the, the attitude's the same. So I thought she nailed that. I thought Anna Tor was great. Nico Parker as Sarah. Am I the only one that didn't know Tanny Newton had a daughter? I mean, I probably should have known that. I love Tanny Newton, but, but I didn't know she had a daughter. But holy cow, I don't think any of, is it all? O-L, all, all? I don't, th I don't think any of her dad's genes came through at all because she is purely Tanny Newton. Anyways. That's a whole side point. I thought she played Sarah really, really well. And you could feel that relationship between Sarah and Joel immediately. And I love that they fleshed out more time with Sarah. Because in the game, spoiler alert. Okay, there will be spoilers in this in this review, just so you know. So, yes, in the game, you basically wake up as Sarah. There's a brief interaction about with the watch where she gives the watch to Joel. Um, and then he takes it to bed and you wake up and you walk around the house and shit hits the fan and then you die. So I'm glad that we got more time with Sarah in the show. We got to spend a little bit more time in the world before everything fell apart and it gave the creators of the show a, that opportunity to kind of drop in a few little nuggets of, hey, if you're paying attention and you've played the game, you know what we're doing here. Like there's that moment where she's in the classroom and you hear the little tapping on the desk and then she looks over and you see the, the person's hand just kind of wigging out tap it and you know if you played the game okay yeah that person is infected yep that's what that's happening there and i love that they got to do that i love that they got to add these little nuggets in that weren't in the game 
So I really enjoyed the first 20 minutes of the show. Although it is a bit of a derail from the game, I thought it was important. In a show, it's not like the game where you are putting yourself into the game. You're playing the game. You get to experience it at your own pace. And you kind of get to put yourself into the situation. In the show, the show needs to develop those relationships. They need to show you the people that we're watching and rooting for. We as viewers have to feel for these characters and understand them. And that's why the show needed that extra 20 minutes to flesh out Sarah and Joel and the relationship and how everything kind of falls apart. But then cut to the scene where they are fleeing the city and they took a bunch of those shots almost directly from the game. Those POV shots in the car as they're driving, a bunch of the shots in the street, the way the, the car gets flipped over and Joel's carrying Sarah and just so much of it from the game they took and put in the show and made it work and they made it work terrifically. And then as we progress through the episode, you can start, start to see some other things that they've changed. Like we get introduced to Ellie a lot sooner, which again, I thought was important because in the game, if they'd followed the game, we wouldn't have been introduced to Ellie until almost the end of the episode. It almost takes about an hour of gameplay before we see Ellie. So introducing her and showing her little side story as Joel and Tess do their thing, I thought that was important too, to start to develop the viewer's connection with Ellie at an earlier stage. And then probably the biggest thing they changed for me is the reveal that Ellie is immune. Let me preface all this by saying that I watched the show with my wife, the first episode, who's never played the game, who's never seen anything about The Last of Us. She doesn't know anything at all. And within about half an hour of the show, once we first see Ellie and, and we have that brief conversation about how important she is and how she's meant for something more bigger than anybody else, like immediately my wife just turned and said, well, sh yeah, she's immune, right? Like she she's immune to whatever's happening. So I thought the decision for them not to overplay that moment was a good one. Because it would have been really, really easy for them to say, well, this will be the climax, the cliffhanger of the first episode, when we find out she's immune. But given how obvious it is that she is immune, that could have absolutely been a bit of a anticlimactic ending. And I think it would have caused audiences who perhaps haven't seen the game to think that this is all just going to be kind of predictable and telegraphed. Because they would have said... That, yeah, I already knew that. Like, I figured that out. Why is that Why is that such a big thing? So I think for them to underplay that moment was actually a smart decision. So in the game, there's two soldiers that put them on the ground, put those devices to their necks. In the show, they made it so it's just one soldier instead of two. And the reason I think they did that is so that they could give Joel the opportunity to be the one to kill that soldier with his bare hands. Because in the game, it's just Tess shoots the one, Joel shoots the other in the head, boom, it's over in a few seconds. There's no consequences emotionally to killing those soldiers because, well, they're just like, they're just throwaway soldiers, whatever. But in the show, they decided to make the moment bigger than that because Joel is standing there. He's saying, whoa, whoa, whoa. He's protecting Ellie, just like he's protecting his daughter 20 years ago from a soldier who has a gun pointed at them. And for him, it's this flashback moment to what happened to Sarah. And he just beats the crap out of him and then looks at his hand and sees all the blood. And then we hear the conversation between Ellie and Tess as Tess realizes she's immune. And we hear Ellie explaining that, no, 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 this is three weeks old. This is three weeks old. This, this is not fresh. So you hear that conversation, but it's all, it's like semi-muted. It's, it's kind of just like it's there in the background as we see Joel focusing on his hand and the blood that's all over his hand and everything, everything else is just kind of a blur. And so you you hear that conversation and they reveal to us that, yes, she is immune, just like you thought she was, but they don't make a big deal out of it. They don't make that the climax of the episode. They don't make that this huge reveal, which I thought was really, really smart, actually. So, so that's another one of the ways that the show did differ from the game. But overall, I thought they captured the game amazingly well on screen. I thought overall the atmosphere and the tone and the sets were absolutely phenomenal. Like, they nailed it. How much the world's fallen apart, you really feel that in the show as well. And I thought, you can see, that's where all the budget's going, is, is, to, re is to building this world so that it feels like the game. And I thought they did that absolutely perfectly. Craig Mazin and Neil Druckmann did an absolutely terrific job. And I had a lot of faith in the two of them when I heard that they were going to be the ones helming the show. Because Craig Mazin coming off Chernobyl, which in my opinion is probably the best limited series of all time. 
I had a lot of faith in him being one of the main hands on the show. And so far, he has not disappointed. I also love that they took the composer from the game and they brought him in to, to, to work on the show. Because the music in the game is such an integral part of the world. And so to hear those chords come up in the show, and I, that whole opening credit sequence was cool. I felt very much like an HBO opening credit sequence. But when you tie in that music from the game, it, I loved it. I thought it was great. So overall, I absolutely loved this first episode. I thought it was great. And I'm very, very excited to see where they go with future episodes. I know that there's an episode coming up where they have taken a lot of liberties with certain characters and they've really, really fleshed them out and given them a whole storyline. And Murray Bartlett apparently is playing one of these characters and I loved him in The White Lotus. So I'm really excited to see what he does in the show. So, so there's a whole bunch of stuff coming up that I'm looking forward to. And I'm excited to talk to you guys about it as well. So any comments or thoughts you guys have, leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you guys next week.